Okay guys, just doing a video of the internals of the gasifier. I've just got my Gretsch here, I've got to fix this whammy bar. Um, now, where is it? Over here. Now I've taken the reactor barrel apart and I've discovered that the um, great shaking motor that I have on the side here is way too close to the barrel. The heat that's uh, radiating from that was heating it up too much last night. So I'm going to move that back another half a foot, or six inches out further, and fabricate an alley or aluminium plate, possibly just bolt it straight onto this one, but a lot larger in size. I'll just pan back so you can see. Other than that, the gasket held up well. This red stuff, I'm going to have to reset that and make another gasket for it. Uh, it's very black inside. I'm going to get KO wool and insulate it and make a rib, hooped rib section to hold it in there so it can clear the ash, ash cleaning door and that sort of thing. I'm very happy with that and probably treat it with some high temp paint again um, because this paint here is peeling off and it's not as high temp as I thought it was. So the barrel did get very hot. Uh, but I did not have any success with the setup that I'm currently running. So I'm going to use some stove paint. I'll probably paint the bottom section black and leave the rest of it army green. Uh, now let's go over to the important stuff, eh? Um, where am I? Over here. I've taken the top section out. And what you'll see here is this invert cone that I've uh, adopted off uh, the All Power Labs website, which um, I'm going to change. Now, I'm going to give you a rundown of what's actually here. Okay. Now, this over here is the ash grate, and the pin goes into the side of this. Turn it around so you can see. There's a pin. The um, half-inch pin goes into here and shakes in back and forth like that. That hangs off with stainless steel D shackles off these chains here. Okay, so the chains, you know, and it runs about a quarter of an inch away from this bottom cone. Now I'm going to give that more room because I did find that the um, motor was jamming up and when I shook it, once I pulled this out, I found that it was well, I didn't take into account the fact that um, heat expands things, so I think that when the grate was getting hot, it was rubbing up against the bottom of the cone here and jamming it up. So a bit more room will be better. Now let's have a look at the cone dimensions, eh? Now, as you can see, the top cone is... Let's get this imperial tape here for those that need imperial measurements. Uh, we've got three... Uh, where are we? Three inches to the reduction zone. Um, it's three inches along that way, okay, to the reduction zone. It is, uh, just bear with me because I can't do this uh, very well with one hand, six inches wide by ooh, three and a half. But don't forget that I have a three millimeter stainless liner inside. Now I had to make this cone out of three parts. Reason being, because I've used such thick steel, there is no way to roll it in one section. And I found it easier to make three parts and then just run stitches and a full weld all the way around to seal it up. So it's fully lined from the bottom to the top with three millimeter stainless. And the outside is six millimeter galvanized um, pipe which um, all up gives you nine millimetres or, you know, three-eighths of an inch. Is that right? Something like that. Okay. And you can see there the five burner tubes for the nozzles, or the five blower tubes, I should say, coming down um, and poking in just above the top cone. That's the ignition port there. Um, she pokes down. I've got this set sideways on the ground because it's so tall and I've got the gantry holding it, the weight. So um, now this reduction here 
This is a reducer, a sewage reducer, a steel sewage reducer that uh, measures 11 millimetres thick, very thick pipe, cost me $55. Okay, now the top of it, which is the same diameter uh, as the hopper, is 10 inches. It reduces down to 6 inches. Okay, that's what we've got there. Alrighty, now the nozzles sit just above that about an inch above where it starts to become a cone okay and go down to the reduction zone. What I'm going to do is cut him straight across there and I'm going to use this bottom cone, turn it upside down and weld it to the top and this cone here you're going to get rid of it and I'm going to put a straight section of pipe at two and a half inch diameter in there and readjust the grate to suit that okay um, it's a very heavy unit and I'm also going to put a heat sink, uh, probably roll the sheet and put the plaster of Paris and sand mix. Oh, that's the compressor. Bear with me a second, I've got to turn this puppy off. <laughs> okay, let's just go back to where we were here. Um, okay. Where am I? Okay. Now, <clears throat> what you'll see is what was happening. The depth of this top cone. The depth of this top cone is, it's just not deep enough. By the time I got an ember bed here, it sucks straight through. And all the coals built up at the bottom. And nothing was getting cracked. The very first time I fired it up and I was producing gas, I had a smaller fuel. Um, and I do believe it did get hot enough, or possibly thereabouts, and somehow it managed to stay in there long enough to crack some, some tars. But I think that using this cone here would be a much better option turning it around the other way and using a straight section at the bottom, which makes sense to me. I don't know why I did this, but I'm finding out now. Now the length of this pipe, uh, this cone, by, uh, cone at the bottom is, um, the length of that is six and a half inches, okay, diameter at the top is seven inches, but I can probably shorten that up a little bit and bring it down to about six inches, which is probably a little wide, but then again my reducer there is that diameter too so I'm running a slightly larger system and I've got five nozzles here and what I'm going to do is go around to the top of the hopper turn the torch on and you'll be able to see how they poke through um, here we go I'm just going to poke my head in through here just so you can see I'll just turn that torch on as you can see down there there's the five nozzles which I can unscrew through the side port and that reduction is just not deep enough. I believe that going the other way around would be much much better. Now I have a two and a half inch redu reduction zone in there and um, I was going to make it smaller but I think what I'll do is um, leave it according to some, some advice that I've received. Uh, other than that, I was going to make it a single nozzle setup, but I've been advised to leave it as a five nozzle setup. I get a lot of turbulence with the five nozzles, but I think it's due to this cone setup here. Um, probably going to use this pipe here, which is about a seven millimeter wall thickness. It's fairly thick, and cut him down to three inches. So basically, if you can see that, she'll be sitting like that at the end of that but upside down. And um, that's about it really. Uh, other than that, oh, this was the fuel I used last night. Now I chopped this up um, from split logs, which I made with my hand powered wood splitter. Now, I think it was too wet, to be honest. Some of it's smaller than others, and I just could not get this to light. Now I had more luck with the dead sticks and branches because we live on five acres here. So, yeah, not seeing much good with that. But I'm probably going to go the other route 
and try that and see how we go. So I've also made a manometer for the gasifier and I was wondering why it wasn't working last night and I realised that after I started tinkering with this and looking around I found what I had done here with this clear tube which was very silly on my part was I just put this tube straight on to that fitting and that fitting was very very hot and it just melted off so halfway through the session the bloody thing burnt off and nothing going so I'm going to replace that with a stainless steel line to run it straight up and to the back of the manometer. Now with that fuel that I tried to light last night I got two full jars two full jars of water black dirty water. Now that's not a good indication of anything but you know yeah bad news but I do think that this setup here is going to prove a lot better and um, I'm going to basically hook into this and um, change it around hopefully hopefully all goes well oh, I'll just show you this uh, hand powered splitter I've made this is the beast here basically what you got is a uh, axe head welded on I put um, bodybuilding weights on the top there as many as I need to actually drop that down and it is sprung with springs at the back which is adjustable and you put that table beneath it for logs that you cut and you can split them down to whatever size you like it's also got a um, log holder there so you can put your logs on clip it down and um, cut your wood as you want it to whatever size and length and newly acquired drop saw that I did all the cuts with yesterday that's a great cheap Chinese thing good for this sort of thing don't know how long it'll last but it'll do the job for now but um, anyway that's what I have to show so basically there you have it now these um, air tubes here they measure 20 millimeter which is just under an inch um, and the nozzles I've got in there might be able to peer inside and see just in there which I don't think you can oh, you might be able to oh, there we are um, they're 3 eighths with the screwable ends and they jut down to the um, fire cone so they're pointing downwards okay um, that's about it Hopefully I've enlightened you and um, I can get some feedback once I start hacking into this. Now I'm going to have to cut this weld line here right across, drop the cone out, cut the cone there again and add the straight section on the bottom of it and weld it from the top to back up there. Okay, and possibly I'm going to move those chains and put them to the bottom of the flange here where it's not so hot because I don't think that's going to last a really long time. I'm of the understanding that I don't want to be pulling this thing apart once I've got it going I want to know I can get a good two three years running out of it before I have to seriously consider pulling it apart and fixing it anything that might be wrong like corrosion and that kind of thing and I did build it very very heavy duty to start with unfortunately the design is not capable of producing what I'm after so we're going to alter that and hopefully see some decent results. Okay, I'm signing out.